everyone is Dean with ATG Digital back with another video. Let's just hop right into it. What is going on with Bitcoin, right? We want the price to go up, not down. Why is the price going down with all of these huge catalysts ahead and some of which have already passed? Let's get into it. Just a few weeks ago, we were incredibly euphoric. People were uh, your favorite mainstream uh, money manager was calling for a hundred thousand minimum for Bitcoin. Some like Kathy Wood called for Bitcoin at some point reaching one million. We had the halving, which was uh, another catalyst for Bitcoin because the supply was shrinking. Uh, this happens every four years. This was also a huge catalyst for Bitcoin as well. And we also had the B the Bitcoin ETFs uh, launch, and we have more and more launching every day globally. So why is the price going down? Well, to answer that question, let's just back up a bit and just think about investing, like the psychology of investing. When people invest, they tend to want the asset to go up when it goes down. They have increased desire or increased likelihood of selling it. That's just how it works. And I can tell you, um, there are some new people, some new investors, I'm sure, that have got exposure to Bitcoin and crypto as all of the crypto mania has started to gain attention. And I can bet that some of these people just did not anticipate the volatility of Bitcoin like we've seen. I mean, frankly, I mean, it hasn't been as volatile as we've seen in, in past years. I mean, it only went from 73,000 down to, I think, as, as low as 66,000. So, I mean, that is very volatile. But just imagine those buyers who bought at 70, 71, 72, 73K, and they were just getting exposure to Bitcoin. They're probably not super happy. Some of these people... Um, probably have had some uh, weak hands just because they don't have as much exposure to crypto. Uh, they're not as familiar with crypto and the volatility associated with the markets. And that probably led to some selling. This is just mere speculation. But we have some other things to look at as well. Another reason we may have seen a sell off in Bitcoin is that when people look at an asset and it's not moving in the direction that they would like it to move and it looks kind of stagnant, people are inclined to get out of that asset especially a novel asset like crypto. I can tell you a brief story where I was invested in a meme coin. Um, I had about a thousand dollars worth of a meme coin and um, it, the price just kept crashing. It crashed like for a week or so. And at some point I, 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 I caved, I sold. I kid you not, within about three weeks later, my thousand dollars would have been worth about, um, about half a million dollars. It may seem crazy, but when there's a crypto mania, uh, some of these meme coins can rock it higher than some of the most respectable altcoin so this was a very painful lesson had i just waited like a week later i could have you know cashed out i could have my one thousand dollars could have turned into about 30 grand or 50 grand had i waited even two weeks later it would have been about 100 grand had i waited about three weeks it would have been about a quarter of a million dollars had i waited about four weeks it would have been about five hundred thousand. now this doesn't happen all the time in crypto in fact it's very you know rare to have this sort of opportunity you know just pass by but I'm just speaking to what happens when uh, sellers become impatient and when they're looking at an asset that's not necessarily moving in the direction they would like to, they're more inclined to sell it. You know, I look back on that, that sale and I've expressed, I've talked with Paul and the team about it and I was like, man, I really, I really fumbled about, you know, six figures from about a thousand dollars by just being impatient and not having strong hands. That said, Always do what's in the best interest of your finances. Never make an all-in bet, and this is never financial advice. We are not financial advisors. I'm just speaking to a story that is, you know, perennially related to Bitcoin in terms of investors being impatient and wanting the price to rocket higher and just, you know, instead choosing to be sidelined. But I will tell you, those who are sidelined, if Bitcoin does rocket, they will miss out on um, some of those gains because they'll be buying into a, a price spike you know, versus buying into the lows when things are uh, not looking the, the best when a, an asset is going down. That is a great opportunity to DCA a dollar cost average rather than um, sell and then buy back in later. But, you know, that's just our opinion. And you always do what's best for your finances. One thing I like to look at at a time like this is what's going on with those dormant wallets. Dormant wallets are some of the greatest opportunities to look at because these are people who held with convention, conviction. Uh, these are people who held for, you know, five, 10 years. They have never, you know, touched this wallet since this time. And what we're seeing is that some of those dormant wallets are now becoming active, right? Wallets that are associated with the Satoshi era when, you know, Satoshi was, uh, quote unquote, around um, 10 years ago. Some of these wallets are not being activated. 
And what happens when these wallets activate, we can assume that these people are going to start cashing out on some of their uh, Bitcoin. But who can blame them? Some of these people were in Bitcoin 10 years ago. I mean, under $1,000, under $10,000, this is well earned. You know, if you're cashing out, you know, at 69000 70000 even 66000 and you were in under $1,000, that's a very respectable game. So what we're seeing here, um, which I also put up these photos, what we're seeing here is that there's a tide uh, or a passing of the baton happening from some of these early investors, some of these early wells. I mean, we like to think of ourselves as ATG Digital, which is our financial publication where we spotlight these opportunities. You can check that out by clicking here. We like to think of ourselves at ATG Digital as being very forward. That said, there were some people who were in Bitcoin in 2017. Um, that's very, very early. Very, very early. We were not that early. And some of those people got into Bitcoin. I know some of you may have heard of the story of the guy who bought um, Papa John's pizza with his Bitcoin. I think he spent about a thousand Bitcoin on a pizza. These guys were early. You know, these men and, and women, they were very early to this sort of technology. So some of them very, you know, respectably are taking um, profit, you know, near this latest high. So, but as that happens, we're seeing a pass of the baton from old wells, um, uh, old uh, early investors to a myriad of people like world governments, companies, Bitcoin ETFs, retail investors like you and I, um, governments, just a number of people now who are, you know, essentially taking this Bitcoin and they're going to push this forward because these people just have higher uh, price targets than someone who, you know, was is selling now. You know, clearly if you're buying now, you're not looking for maybe a 0.5% gain. You're looking for a more substantial gain. So these people have higher conviction and they also have a longer uh, plan of holding Bitcoin than people who are cashing out now. So this may not show up right now on the charts, but over time, as these dormant wallets continue to sell, as these companies acquire more Bitcoin. We're seeing health companies acquire more Bitcoin. Michael Saylor just yesterday announced that they're raising $500 million to purchase more Bitcoin. This comes on the heels of him doing this about three to four times, right? People cannot get enough Bitcoin. It might not look like it, but these respectable companies, they are purchasing Bitcoin. I believe the health company that purchased, uh, I'll place that up here as well, the health company that purchased Bitcoin, they purchased, uh, I think, about $40 million worth of Bitcoin and their stock uh, the market responded by having the stock surge, by bidding the stock up by 25% in that day alone. So it's also showing that investors are, are placing a premium on companies that just hold Bitcoin in their balance sheet, which means that we can see more and more companies, irrespective of the sector, it does not have to be necessarily related to crypto, like the health company, put more Bitcoin in their balance sheet, in which case will allow or will entice investors to add a premium to their uh, underlying business because they just hold Bitcoin, similar to MSTR. And lastly, I think the most important thing you can look at when trying to figure out, okay, should I, should I sell? Should I uh, buy more? Which is, of course, your decision. No one can tell you what to do. We're not financial advisors. But looking at big money, look what they're doing. Like I mentioned, Michael Saylor, they're purchasing 500 million more Bitcoin. I'm sorry, $500 million worth of more Bitcoin. We have hotel companies purchasing more Bitcoin. We have um, just companies cropping up everywhere. I think Reddit recently, I've, I've mentioned this before, is purchasing Bitcoin. It's, it's becoming more and more obvious that companies are getting exposure to Bitcoin, which creates more scarcity, especially because we also have Bitcoin miners who are not selling. They're not in a rush to sell Bitcoin at the moment because Clearly, they anticipate the price going higher. And if they anticipate the price going higher, they're going to pour it as much as they possibly can. We also have global ETFs that now hold 5% of the total supply of Bitcoin. That's incredibly bullish. Remember, we don't need like 90% of Bitcoin supply to be like, you know, off the market for the price to rocket. But as more and more of the supply becomes scarcer and demand for this asset rises, that is when we'll see a huge surge in Bitcoin. As Bitcoin surges, altcoins for sure have strong potential to surge. And I wrote about an altcoin yesterday in our Substack, which is our free newsletter. Feel free to uh, check that out here. I wrote a Substack yesterday about an altcoin that I think has pretty strong potential to be bid up. It's now trading at a discount, of course, because Bitcoin, um, it, you know, the price plummeted a bit. But it, it's trading at about a... 25%, I believe, discount to what it was trading in March when Bitcoin was 
approaching its all-time high. If you would like more detailed updates on what's happening in the crypto market and also the stock market, consider subscribing for just $9.99. We uh, put out content on a weekly basis, written and video content, including trade alerts, uh, that our subscribers are able to benefit from as we see opportunities in the market budding up. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. Like I said, subscriptions start as cheap as $9.99, $9.99. So please take advantage of that if you are in the market for such a service. And thank you so much for watching. And please let me know what you would like me to cover next. I'll see you later. See ya.